Focus. Ideate. Innovate. Enable. After agriculture, the country's textile sector is one of the largest and most important industries in the Indian economy in terms of output, foreign exchange earnings and employment generation. Yet, this sector faces numerous hurdles in terms of easy availability of finance, high cost of money, antiquated labor laws, power shortage, besides infrastructural bottlenecks. Cumulatively, these problems have put India at a great disadvantage with its neighboring countries. So what needs to be done? CNBC TV 18's A.B. Ravi caught up with the Textiles Minister Dr. K. Sambasiva Rao to find out how he was addressing the industry's problems and what kind of plans he is putting in place to ensure that it is Advantage India. And this is what he has to say. Take a look. Dr. Rao, welcome to the show. Dr. Rao, you took over the ministry sometimes in June this year. And the first thing you did was to set a target of $50 billion for exports. Uh, what I want to ask you is, what are the measures you are putting in place to make that happen? The moment I take in charge as a minister on 19th of uh, June, 21st itself I started going to the around the country. I directly interacted with the industrialists, with the weaving community, with the handcraft people, with the exporters and uh, power looms, milling section, everybody. And I understood what are their problems, in what manner they can improve their production and exports. I directly interacted with them. Okay. Most of them have expressed some simple problems like, for example, in regard to the wool import, there is a lot of value addition in this country. Okay. Wool is abundantly available in New Zealand and Australia. Our people are ready to import. But then there are some regulations in this country like quarantine. That means the, the, the moment the wool is imported and then available in the airport, customs people will say, unless you get the clearance from quarantine, you will not be allowed to take back take anything. That makes them to lose at least a month time in this. Okay. So they are losing very heavily. And they are discouraged also, they are demotivated. They said, sir, people, something like this, if we can sort out, we can double the increase of the wool. For example, now the wool exports are 5,000 crores. They said, some such problems are avoided. Minor tweaking has to be done, you are saying. Huh? Minor tweaking has to be done for that industry. Minor things, minor, minor corrections. Then immediately I, after my coming back, I went to the, uh, the Sarada Power, who is the minister concerned. And I explained to him, as per the act, there is a provision. There is no need for quarantine here. And then he said, he really called the secretaries, joint secretaries, everybody, and went through the act. They said, nothing done, don't require. Okay. Similarly, the exports of handicrafts are about 17,000 crores today. When I talked to the exports people, the handicrafts people, I contacted a, a meeting with them, all the, all the exporters in the country for handicrafts. They said, sir, 60% of our exports are only to USA and Europe. Yeah. Now, because of the meltdown there, yeah. that is being affected. But then we didn't keep quiet. We but that is not only for handicraft, even for general I you, item by yeah. item. Yeah. I will handicraft. Yeah. So then I what I asked them, what is your problem? Then they said, now we have to find alternative markets. They said Latin America, Asia, or some other alternative market. But for supplying to the Latin America, if they place order today in Latin America, it takes six months for them to get it made here giving order to the artisan and then sending it through ship or air, air and yeah. then making it. So they said we want if you can government can help us in uh, having a facility of warehousing in Latin America. In Latin America, okay. And a showroom and a sales room. Then we can double that 17,000 to 34,000 in less than two and a half years. Okay. So what is required? Ask them, what do you require? You require help from the government. How much money you want? 100 crores to be spread over in four years, we want. If the government can help us, we assure you from our side, we will double it in this period. So, where else is being set up in Latin American countries? Latin American. So, I said, okay, I will put it to the government and get you the 100 crores and start a warehouse there in Latin America and you can proceed with that with that confidence. I uh, went. Gone to the each? Uh, each, each. Power looms, for example. Uh, I will tell you power looms. There are about 23 lakh of power looms in this country. 23.33 oh, lakh yeah, of power looms. But they are all absolute, age old. The technology is upgraded like anything uh, in the rest of the world. So, with uh, the absolute 
power looms, the production is too little. If we can upgrade them, make it shuttle get them into technology. Technology. Upgradation is made, then their production can go up three times. Uh, now we have a scheme wherein we have increased the interest uh, uh, subvention to 6% to all power looms power looms for modernization and increase the subsidy from 15% to 20%. That means uh, industrialist who is ready to purchase brand new shuttleless looms from the country by which they can increase the production three times, government is prepared to give 30% subsidy on that. We are number two in cotton production, yes. number two in cotton yarn, number two in silk, number two in cellulosic fiber Perfect. and number one in jute. Perfect. Yet, when we compare to China, we are nowhere there in the market share. China share in textile is 32 percent, in clothing is 37 percent, we are 5 percent, 3 and a percent. What is that they have got it right and we are not able to do it? One of the reasons is, here is democracy. Okay. There is a guided one. So, there the people have got fear for the government. The government says that you do this, they do it, that's all. And there is a strict vigilance, strict monitoring on the performance of each individual. And they concentrated on skill development. So the production is being done in a mass scale in China. Any item they take up, mass scale. So their production has gone up substantially and they are able to capture the market of world over and they became number one in this regard. But now, totally different. The wages have gone up there in China. So they are shifting from China to, so it's going to be advantage for us? Yeah, definitely, definitely. All that this country has to do is they must concentrate on skill development in this country. So how are we doing that skill development? Now, as a member of parliament, I am making a noise in the parliament since 1985 that no nation can prosper unless every citizen is skilled in some vocation or other. Luckily, the government, it has caught the attention of the government and now the government is concentrating on skill development and made provision of substantial amount in this regard. True. But uh, personally, uh, not as a party minister, are the government minister. Personally, I am of the opinion, still the government has to do a lot in increasing the skill development. And luckily, to my ministry, they have provided 1900 crores rupees. In for skill development? For skill development in the 12th plan. Okay. That so means that's good news for the textile sector. Textile. So I can increase 15 lakh people skilled, make, make 15 lakh newly skilled people in this uh, profession, in this textile industry, during the training period also. What about finance? I think the, what I talk to the industry people, they are saying is banks and financial institutions are not looking at this sector very favorably. Is there a way where these people can give uh, priority sector lending to the textile sector?